You broke into the Ministry of the Environment because of mold? The charges are break and enter, mischief, and common nuisance. Your Honor, the Willis's five-year-old son is in custody with CAS. This is uh, Noah. This is Gordon and Gloria's kid? I, I think that the police are looking for us. You took your son from the hospital illegally. My clients have a lot of trouble receiving adequate information about their son, which leads them to become desperately worried These about... These people need to be supervised. Your parents, are, they believe things, in, things that nobody else believes. And uh, basically, that's why you're not living with them right now. The point is, and I've studied this very carefully, a massive, devastating right. viral pandemic is inevitable. Gordon, but do we have to do this today? The Please, scientific community no longer talks about if. It's a matter of when. Well, is when today? No. So let's just, you yeah, know. When it comes, will, will it be back? Okay. Very bad. As the poles melt, the rainforests heat up, and the breeding pattern of viral life evolves. The conditions for destruction are rough. Like absolute hey. destruction? Oh, that's the only kind of destruction he's interested in, right? Oh, so... well, why should I keep seeing my probation officer? <laughs> why? Why? Because you need to keep seeing your probation officer, because if you don't, you're going to go to jail. And even if absolute destruction is inevitable, which is like a... <laughs> Look, jail is not the type of place you want to be while you're waiting for that. So, guys, this is really important. We're almost here, okay? So, listen, listen, now. This entire... Okay, go, uh, Gloria, you gotta, gotta listen, okay? Okay. This entire day, all right, that we're spending with, uh, with Noah and his foster mother and the caseworker, this is like... A, think of it like a test. Can I take the test lying down? Because it's better for my back. Uh, no, you, you, don't, you don't have to take the test, okay? <laughs> this is a supervised meeting with you and your son. And, uh, and if it's successful, you know, if by some miracle this whole day can go by without something really catastrophic happening, then CAS could actually approve more supervised visits, all right? And then, because if you want to regain custody... I need to know that she's a loving person or I cannot leave my son with her. But that's it doesn't matter if she's a loving person or not. You guys. Because our ecosystem has hey, to be hey, perfectly hey, hey. balanced oh, for our atmosphere to remain in a state that doesn't permit Gordon. deadly viruses. And something's coming to upset the balance. But not today. Nothing is going to upset the balance today. Okay? Yes, that'll be $20. Well, I, don't have any, I don't have any money, though. Like, can I borrow them for a while? I'll bring them back, okay. guys. No money, no balloons. Gordon, what's going on here now? Noah likes to see things float. Uh, he wants what? He, he won't let me borrow the balloons. He wants money. Uh, is not the joy of a young child payment enough? No, I want the $20. Okay, here you go. Balance restored. There we Enjoy are. your balloons. Hang on tight. We would enjoy them more if they were free like the air and the wind. Our animals here. Yeah, it's a, it's a farm. Well, those are chickens. Noah is near chickens. Well, it's a farm, so it's okay. Chickens carry pandemic viruses, oh. the H5N1 virus, I, okay. the avian flu. Okay. This is no place for children. Well, it's a farm. It's not so... a farm. It's a prison. They got all the animals in jail cells. No, they're not cells. They're, ca they're cages. They're oh, what does that mean? Do not pens. feed animals. I mean, it's animals got to eat too, Guys. right? What kind of you know woman what? would take a young child to a place where they keep animals in cages and don't feed them? This is, this is Let the him touch them! This is the calm down. No, stop touching the chicken! I was hoping stop to avoid touching the chicken! You're, you're upsetting the bounce! You're upsetting the bounce! seats in the Sprite Zone. Jake wanted to see LeBron James, but they'd sold out all the cheap seats for the Cavaliers, and the other tickets were way too expensive. So we saw Memphis. All that dough to see the Raptors lose by 30 points to Memphis. Okay, so you lost your temper and assaulted the usher because the Raptors lost? No, that place just got to me. Jake wanted a Chris Bosch jersey, but they're 150 bucks. Even the piece of shit program cost 10. So the prices at the ACC upset you. How do you think it feels to look over and see some asshole in a suit getting his kid whatever he wants? Look, you're going to have to come up with something better than We're this. We're sitting a mile away because and Jake's looking at me like I'm the asshole because he can't see because shit. Because none of this is going to wash as a defense. You punched the guy out. You knocked him unconscious. That usher was a dick. All I'd done was move closer so Jake could see. To the front row. 
Here I was in the cheap seats with kids yelling all around me because some clown is throwing t-shirts into the crowd and crappy hip-hop shit blaring in my ears. And I look down and see all these empty seats courtside. Empty, but owned. Those seats belong to season ticket holders. And if they'd have showed up, I would have moved. Because I know how to get out of the way of my betters, Alice. And the people who own those seats are the princes of Toronto. We all know that. Like, they were born into those seats. But I didn't have the heart to tell that to Jake, though. Tell him to enjoy himself, because he'd probably never get to sit there again. So, with all this festering inside you, you decided to start drinking? Yeah, big mistake. I mean, I could feel myself boiling up. All those people in that section, all the money. I started to feel like I do on the job sometimes. I'm sorry. I work in demolition, pulling apart houses a, a thousand times nicer than any place I'll ever live in. Bathrooms and kitchens that cost more to build than I make in a year. I see that and then go back to my rented basement in Scarborough. But it was the usher you assaulted, Mike, not some Toronto big shot, some kid making not much more than minimum wage. I could see him coming at me out of the corner of my eye. And was he threatening you in any way? It was just the way he looked at me, like he could tell that we didn't belong. I had to stop him before he opened his mouth and said that in front of Jake. Okay, then. Here we are. Yeah. You talk to my ex-wife? She's not coming, but she said Steve might come down. Steve? That's her husband. I know. You're not bailing me out. What kind of humiliating shit is that? But you're still on probation from that bar fight, and the Crown wants a surety. So, you got any other ideas? I can't ask my boss. He'll just fire me if he finds out. But man, Steve? He's got my wife. He's got my kid. Now... What is this? Just rubbing my face in it? Maybe he's just trying to help. No, I can't let him do it. It's gotta be her. D but I spoke to her, Mike. It's gotta be her! Just leave them on my desk. They're files. They need to be filed. I like to keep active cases on my desk where I can find them easily. Trust me, it's a good system. It's not a system. A system requires that you file things. Look, if you need something, just ask me for it. I will give it to you. I like to get it myself. Well, then what am I doing here? Good question. Hi. I'm sorry to ask this. I mean, you don't even know me, but I need $20. I ran out of gas, and I live in Etobicoke, and I forgot my wallet. And if you could just lend me $20, I would just be so grateful to you. Yep, sure. Oh, thank you. I'm going to go right home and get my wallet and come right back. Okay. I promise. Sorry. Here you go. Thanks. Thanks again. No problem. OK, thanks. She's lying, you know. Maybe. Who leaves her house without a wallet or a bank card? She was lying. I don't care. I looked her in the eyes so that she would know... Know what? ...that I knew that she might be lying, that I gave her the money just because I wanted to, in case she really needed it. It doesn't take $20 worth of gas to get to Tobacco. She was lying. I don't care. I still feel good about it. Bye. Okay. I'm in big shit. Some stupid thing just happened to me, and you have to help me. I'm so sorry. What? Oh, my so God. Sorry. Oh, my God. Calm down. It's going to be OK. Just tell me what the problem is. The problem is my bad luck, OK? I have the luck of a piece of shit. I, I had an accident. Oh, are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Thank you for oh, asking. I, I, I was parking the car, and I was trying to be very careful, you know, and then I heard something, uh, and I felt this bump like that. And I come outside, and, and I see the man lying on the ground. You oh. hit him with the car? Yeah, can you believe it? Is that the luck of a piece of shit or not? And I was trying to be so careful. I promise oh, you, I, I know, was. I know, I know, I know. Are those my keys you're I holding? I mean, I can't believe it. Everything goes wrong with me. Why? I'm a good person. I know. Okay, I haven't always been faithful to my women, but... Yeah, but I'm sure you made them happy in other ways. Did <laughs> you give him the keys to my car? Was he driving my car? Is that important at a time like this, Eduardo? Honey, tell me, where's the man you think he had? Okay, he's sitting next to the car, and he looks pretty... Up, I guess you could okay, say. we better get down. Yeah, good idea. Okay, come Did on. Did you lend them my car? I'll explain later. We should call the police. No, please, no police. I, I can be anywhere near the police. Well, I'm just saying if it could be avoided, you know, because they, 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 they scare me a little. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Now, in my country, the police are corrupt military enforcers who, who like to beat people to death. Pigs. They're all pigs. Uh, please, uh, promise me you won't call the police. I promise, I promise. You can't promise him that. I can promise him anything I want. She's upset because she doesn't like the idea of her daddy having someone like me as a friend. She's upset because she arrived at her dead father's house to see you hauling away his possessions. She didn't even ask me what I was doing. She just called the cops. It's all a big mistake, and that's how it's going to play in court. Except your girlfriend, Tanya, is going to testify against you, too. Oh, look, I, I have no illusions about our relationship. You keep each other company in the bad times. Occasionally, she screws me over. So she's lying when she says you're stealing all that stuff? Oh, she can't help that. It's just her nature to put herself first. It's the crack. People who rob their own grandmothers to buy more crack. They're paying her to testify, right? She gets a witness fee, yeah. And what's her face? Caroline's probably paying her, too? Maybe. But if there's any truth in what she's going to say, it's better that I know now. You know, if Tanya's testifying, I want to testify, too. No, you don't. That'll just give the Crown the opportunity to use your record against you. 
How else are they going to find out what happened? I mean, all they're going to hear is Tonya's bullshit version. It doesn't matter because... It matters to me. I was a lonely old man. Yeah, and he probably took us in just for company, but... Well, it was an act of kindness. And I repaid that act of kindness by working his garden. He gave me all that stuff. It made him feel good to think that anybody even wanted it anymore. Okay, that's nice. But here's the important thing. Paul never complained to the police or anybody else about you, right? No, why would he? Okay, and since Paul's dead, if we discredit Tanya, then it's just a daughter's assumption that you've been stealing from him. But if you get on the stand, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about your extensive criminal record, which, if you haven't noticed, is full of property offenses. So discrediting the Crown's witness is the only way to go here. What about that will of Paul's that I gave you? Jim, when somebody writes on a piece of paper, all this shit is yours, pal. That's not a legal document. Come on, all the people I ripped off in my life, and now this one time when I'm actually innocent, I'm supposed to sit there quietly and listen while everybody lies? Bad, I'm testifying. Listen, you fucking idiot, you. Whatever you say. I say I'm testifying. Got it. Got it. Sir. Sir, excuse me, sir. Huh? Which one of them opened the gate? Okay. Who let the chickens out? He did, that one there. I'm charging him with mischief. Oh, oh, do you have to do that? He's actually on probation. He's lucky I'm not charging him with theft. Theft of what? The chickens. It's possible he's planning to steal them. Uh, no, I, I, that's, uh, to, to tell the officer, did you, uh, did you let them out because you were planning on stealing them? No, no, it's because they look sad. See, yeah, he thought they, they, he thought they looked sad. He's, he's very sensitive, that's Noah. all. You know, well, oh my God, what's wrong with that Noah. one? Oh, that's a... Uh, oh, God. Uh, where, where's Noah. Gloria? Where, where, where's Gordon? Where, where's, where's Noah? He's gone. They took him. Took oh. who? My foster child. You, this is all your fault. No, no. You helped them plan the whole thing. You staged a distraction so that they could take him. You're a kidnapper. No, I'm sure there's an explanation. Well, you know, he's I'm, sick. I'm... He's a six-year-old boy. And they're deraged lunatics. No, we, not... we have to find him. Noah. Okay. Uh, Noah! Sorry. Noah! Sorry. Noah! Sorry. Noah! Sorry. Noah! Sorry. Noah! There, there's no abduction. Noah! Sorry. I don't mean to. There's no abduction, though. Come on, honey, they, let's they, go. They, they probably just, uh... uh it might be an Amber Alert situation. There's, no, there's nothing Amber, okay? Noah. That's not necessary. Look, they're not deranged lunatics. Yeah. God, they're just, uh, uh... Highly, uh, excitable people. Please, make him come out of there. I'm crushed. I can't move. This is bullshit. He was sitting next to the car when I left him. I did not run him over. Look at my car. Please, please call an ambulance. I'm crushed. My ribs are crushed. My poor baby. Look at the size of this dent. There was no dent. And there was no dent there. Yeah, but there's a dent now. A very large one. Do you have insurance? Why would I need insurance? I don't even have a driver's license. Did you hear what he just said? I need an ambulance. He hit me really hard. You dying piece of shit. Come out of there. OK, I hit him just a little bit, honest. And, and, he, and he was standing next to the car when I left him. I swear to God, I swear to La Santissima Virgen Niña. Yeah, that's right. I I saw it all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and if you need a witness, then, I don't know, maybe what I can What are you doing help. here? Shouldn't you be on your way to Etobicoke? You need a witness or not? Yeah, yeah, well, just go ahead. What did you see? OK, I saw the old guy bang his shopping cart into the car several times, and then I saw him climb underneath. And for a small fee, I, I'd be happy to tell that to the cops. Hey, she's lying. She just wants your money. I know. No, you don't. She's a liar. She lied about needing money for gas. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean she's lying now. Yeah, that's right. So just pay me, and I'll tell the cops what I saw. Sure, no problem. Can I borrow some money? Hey, hey wait a minute. If you tell the cops he hit me, I'll give you half my settlement. How's that going to work? Well, like this. Uh, he ran over me, you saw it, you called the police. Good plan. She's calling the police. Ah, let her. No, no, please, no police. Uh, they make me sick where I come from, remember? They made him sick because he doesn't have a driver's license. Yeah, OK, it's all right. Put the phone away. We'll discuss it, all right? OK. Oh, God. Let's take this inside. He told you he works in demolition? Yeah? yeah? There's a real pecking order in that business. At the top, there's the guys in the union operating the wrecking balls and dynamite and making decent money. At the bottom, there's guys like Mike. Guys who go into people's houses and just pull things apart with a hammer and a crowbar. And that's all he's been doing for 15 years, ripping out tiles, pulling out nails. Kind of explains his attitude. No, it doesn't. The fact that he's a bitter prick explains his attitude. Okay, about, about, about bail, is there any chance? So, no. Tell him sorry, no way. Actually, don't tell him sorry. Just tell him no. Maybe we should consider it for Jake's sake. If we're going to consider Jake, we should be trying to keep his dad in jail as long as possible. It's not like jail is a good place for rehabilitation, if that's what you're thinking. What I'm thinking is the less time he spends with our son, the better. 
Yeah, he loves them, Joanne. That's not the issue. The issue is Mike's entire view of the world and how he deals with things. Like a few months ago when he yelled at Jake's soccer coach for letting parents spend too much money on their kids' equipment. Mike thought it was an unfair advantage. What? I, I kind of agree with him. Because if Jake had better shoes, he'd be a better soccer player? Anyway, Jake was so embarrassed by the incident, he quit. Now, instead of playing soccer, he plays video games. Mike likes to blame the world for his problems, but his biggest problem has always been himself. Don't worry, I I'll talk to him. Yeah? What do you say? It was lazy police work that took one look at my client's record and called it a day. And the fact that his record is basically wall-to-wall -wall thefts and he was caught red-handed stealing from a dead man's house, that had nothing to do with it? He was residing there. He'd been living with his girlfriend in that house for months. Right, slowly emptying it of anything of value. It was how he was being paid for the work he did. He was the, uh, the handyman, the gardener. Oh, the gardener, yes. The police took pictures of that garden. And it's about as dead as your chances of trying to convince me to give the guy a break. Were you going to trial for his lack of gardening ability? If the old man was being robbed, why didn't he call the police? I don't know. Maybe he was too frightened or, or embarrassed or senile. Look, I have your client's own girlfriend saying he was ripping him off. A crack addict with a substantial record of her own. Or a troubled young woman having a crisis of conscience because of her part in scamming a sick old man in the days prior to his death. You know, Jack, you seem a bit desperate. What is it? <laughs> he wants to testify, doesn't he? Yeah, something like Oh, that. gosh, those pesky clients. Life would be so much easier without them, wouldn't it? I'll tell you what. Why don't we let them both have their say? You put your thieving gardener up against my crack whore, and we'll let the judge decide. Are you sure there isn't someone else who would bail you out? Because if not, then maybe you should be pleading. No, don't worry. She'll be here. Mike, I talked to her. She refused. Oh, I don't... She must have changed her mind. So are we ready, Ms. DeRay? Yeah, are we doing this thing or what? Yeah, uh, just, just one second. What's going on? I was persuaded to rethink my position. Uh, are you sure? Because it can't just be your husband who's willing to... It wasn't to... Steve. Mike phoned Jake from jail, told him what it's like in there. Got him very upset. Now, let's just get this over with. Uh, okay. But it can't just look like you're being forced into this because the Crown will see right through it. Look, I told them I'd do my best. So three years after you divorced him, you're willing to take your ex-husband back into the house, which you now share with your new husband, and supervise his every move. Keep him to a curfew, make sure he doesn't touch any alcohol, keep him away from live sporting events. You're willing to do all that. Apparently. I'm sorry? I mean, yes, I'll try. You'll try. And why is that? Was your divorce extremely amicable? Mike gave me full custody of our son without a fight. That was all that mattered to me. So the divorce was painless then. What about your marriage? Objection. I believe I'm entitled to explore the nature of the proposed living arrangement. Answer the question, ma'am. It'll be fine. Things just didn't work out for us. But I don't hate him or anything. Oh, well, that's nice. I mean, one of the basic requirements of being a surety is that you don't hate the accused. But when you say things didn't work out, did Mr. Walsh's temper have anything to do with that? Maybe. Uh, you don't get to say maybe. You get to say yes or no. Yes, then. So, what? He'd get drunk, knock you and your son around a little? Okay, objection. Mr. Walsh is not in custody because of a domestic assault charge. Well, not this time. But weren't domestic assault charges filed against your ex-husband in 1999? It's bullshit. Those charges were withdrawn, and those records are supposed to be sealed. Well, I don't know what gave you that idea. Okay, okay, never mind. Joanne, just tell him the truth. Tell him, for Christ's sake, I mean it! a grip. Sir. I mean, if you think it's okay to bully her in open court, what are you going to do when you get it? Now, she's just antagonizing the accused. Why would I do that? We've already seen him get angry. What, you think I can make him more angry? Oh, yeah. What was that, ma'am? Joanne, come on. Don't do this to me. Just tell him. Tell him what, Mike? That you never actually hit me, but I was afraid half to death that you were going to? Jesus, this is so f***ing... Why are you doing this to me? Nothing is ever your fault, is it? You're in jail for drunken assault that happened right in front of our kid. And you think it's all just part of a big conspiracy to screw you over or something. I'm sorry. I can't have him living in my house. I can't have him anywhere near me or our son. You selfish bitch. You see that? You see how you've upset him? Don't worry, Moby, buddy. I'll be all right. I f hate you, Joanne. I hate you more than anyone in the world. You know that. You hate me more than Conrad Black. You hate me more than Paul Godfrey. You hate me more than all the people in Rosedale and Forest Hill. You're such an asshole, Mike! Want to redirect? I needed him to go out and get supplies. Now, I should have set him out on his bike, but he gets so worked up in the traffic, and he's had a few accidents. So you thought it would be better to give him my car? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, if you don't want people okay, to use your car, you really shouldn't leave your keys on the desk, right? Okay, we figured it out. 
I give him 500 and I give her... Nothing. You give her nothing, you give him nothing. Hey, that's not what we talked about. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm doing the talking now, okay? First of all, about that $20 I gave you. Yeah, you're not getting that back. I don't want it back. I just want you to tell me that you could see that I knew you were lying about needing the gas. Yeah, but you gave it to me anyway. Why? Well, when you figure that out, you'll stop being an asshole. And in the meantime, you're not getting another penny because now you're just being greedy. And I can't stand greedy people. And you are using your unfortunate situation to take advantage of a very sweet man. We can't reward this kind of behavior, even if I have to get the police involved. Don't worry, it's gonna be fine because I have experience with these kind of people. And now, it's time for both of you to leave. Hey, well, I'm not going anywhere until I get some compensation. There isn't gonna be any compensation. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. In that case, I think I'll just piss on your floor. And what about you? I think I'll just leave. It's disgusting. He pisses quite well for a man his age. Yeah, he does. I came for my father's funeral and to deal with his estate, not to get involved in a criminal matter. But when I got to the house and I saw him loading that clock into his truck, I recognized it from the upstairs landing and I knew... Dining room. He'd moved it into the dining room and she'd known that she ever visited. Mr. Angel? Yes, Your Honor. Shut up. Did you ask him what he was doing with the clock? Yes, and he just kept rambling. He, he was obviously drunk. He kept saying that he was a friend of my father's and that this was a gift. That's what he said at first. Then he said it was payment for work. I didn't believe it was either of those things. But you still let him take it? What was I supposed to do, wrestle it from him? I went inside to call the police. And what did you find when you entered the house? Emptiness. My mother, she died five years ago. She, uh, she loved auctions and she collected antiques. Dozens of beautiful things. They were all gone. Most of the stuff turned up at a pawn shop later. The rest you probably sold somewhere else. Which I was entitled to do with my own possessions. The notion that my father gave him those things is ludicrous. How do you know that? My father was a lot of things. Generous wasn't one of them. The average price of any birthday present he ever remembered to give me was about $15. Now, did you know that the accused had been living with your father for a period of months? Basically, holding him hostage. The doctors told me his blood pressure was so high before his stroke that he wasn't getting enough oxygen to the brain. He, he couldn't have had a clue what this guy was doing to him. How often do you see your father? He'd spend Christmas with us. Every Christmas? No, sometimes. So once a year, but not every year. And you never visited, even though you only lived in Ottawa, right? Well, I'm busy. I have kids. But I'm sure you at least phone, hmm? How often? Once a week? Once a month? On your birthday to make sure you were getting your $15 birthday present? Yeah, come on, Your Honor. That's just rude. Rude? Is this place now a debating club? Look, I was close with my mother. After she died, my father and I didn't... What does this have to do with anything? Good question. You refuse to acknowledge that your father and Jimmy Allister were friends. I'm just wondering, since you admit to having no relationship with him yourself, how the hell would you know who your father was or wasn't friends with? He never had any friends. Mm -hmm. My father taught philosophy at U of T for 30 years. His friends were dead guys, like Nietzsche and Kant. I never saw him talk to a neighbor or a delivery person or anyone. He barely spoke to my mother. And yet suddenly, a few months before he dies, he's best friends with a homeless drunk and his crackhead girlfriend? Well, maybe he was just lonely. And since you never even made the slightest effort to stay in contact with him... My lack of relationship with my father has nothing to do with this. He gave you lousy birthday presents. He never took an interest in your life. And now that he's dead, you feel guilty for abandoning him when your mother died. And you hate the fact that he was closer to a homeless man than he was to you. Okay, would someone tell Dr. Phil here this isn't a therapy session? She's so messed up by guilt and resentment, there's no way she can accept the truth about my client's relationship with her father, and therefore there's no reason to give any weight to her opinion about what happened between them. Hmm? Noah! Gloria! Noah! Gloria! Noah! Hey, you know what? You gotta, you gotta take the chicken back. Oh, no, I don't want to. Please, please take the chicken back. No. <laughs> Noah! Gloria! Noah! And another thing, I need to get to the airport. I think my husband's girlfriend is taking my daughter to Brazil. I, I went to the daycare to get her before they stole her, but you know what they did? Th the people there, they tried to pawn somebody else's kid off on me. I mean, she was a pretty good copy, but not good enough to fool her own mother. He must have paid the daycare staff, and now they're all in on it. Excuse me a second, ma'am. Does anyone know if Miss Gregg here has a lawyer? They tell me she's on the way, Your Honor. Can I continue now? Maybe we should wait 23 for... Twenty-three 
His girlfriend is only 23 years old and he's leaving me to start a new life with her. Sickening. And, and she wants my child, too. Let her have her own, the two-faced little bitch. That's my fella. She was supposed to be the keynote speaker at a conference this morning. Then at 9.30 a.m., I get this call from some frantic woman at the daycare saying she's been arrested. Huh? I knew something like this was coming. You did? No, no, it's just she's a little... Lately, she's been accusing me of some things that are just... Things like what? Like having group sex with the stay-at-home mothers when she's at work. Putting medication into her coffee to keep her dull and stupid. Just oh. dumb stuff. Dumb stuff, not alarming stuff that maybe you should have gotten her some help for? Well, you know, I just thought it was stress. She's very stressed. Go get my daughter. She's at the airport and they have her passport. No one's gonna know she's been stolen. I'll get someone out to the airport and let them know that Latina whore does not have permission to take my child anywhere. Why are you all smiling at me like a bunch of idiots? Get out there! Oh, Jesus Christ. They got you, eh? Okay, that's good. And they're gonna get Felicia, too. You watch. Your new life is gonna go down the toilet, babe. I don't know what she's Here, talking about. Just have a seat, and I'll... Sorry, Your Honor. That's okay, Mr. A. Is this the husband? Yes, I'm... Bridget, look at yourself. What happened? What happened? I caught on to you. That's what happened. You thought you could bring your tart into our home and I wouldn't suspect? <laughs> Are you talking about Felicia? Yes, Felicia, your Latina bombshell. I can hear you in the laundry room making love to her after I've gone to bed. Ooh, yeah, baby, ooh, yeah. What is she talking about? I have no idea. Your Honor, if we can just hold this matter down until I get up to speed, please. I'm coming, Jeffrey. I'm coming very big. You make me sick. Hey. Now okay. get on the phone and tell her to bring my daughter back. Your Honor? Yeah, sorry, let's do that. I, I, take Miss Gregg to the cells for now. You're a sick man, Jeff. If I didn't hate you so much, I'd feel very sorry for you. You hear me? You're pitiful. Let go of me! Oh, my God. So who's Felicia? Ah, uh, she's our housekeeper. She just moved in with us last week. And is anything going on? No. But is she a 23-year-old bombshell? What? Who's he? He's the nice man who's going to tell me what's going on. Please, it'll save me a lot of time. OK, but just this once. She showed up at the daycare looking for her daughter and then denied the child they brought out was hers. She became hysterical, started on about this plan her husband and his girlfriend had to kidnap the daughter and take her to Brazil. And so why were the police called? She called them herself because she believed the daycare was somehow complicit. Police suspected she needed a doctor, so they called the paramedics. But when they tried to get her into the ambulance, she kicked one of them in the groin so hard he passed out. She was arrested for assault and held for a show cause hearing. OK? Thanks. I need VP in my company before I turn 30. You know how hard I work to do that? Anyone I ever, ever reported to was threatened by me. Every single boss. Well, women were the worst. Every woman boss I ever had hated me. They were all so stressed and wrapped up in their own insecurities about looking incompetent. All they saw in me was a threat. All they ever wanted was to do my job. But those women were blinded by the knowledge that professionally, they were more or less doomed. They knew that no matter how hard they worked, it still wasn't going to be enough if they had to go up against a man for a more senior position. And they turned into these stressed, evil, angry... You did well. You got promoted. Haven't you been listening? I'm smart. I knew how to play the game. First, you can't let people know how smart you are because then they resent you. So you got to be careful. And you got to be nice. It's pretty hard to do your job when you're always trying to be nice. It's impossible, as a matter of fact. But if you stop being nice and just try to get the job done, then people think you're a bitch and then they stop listening to you. That's why I have to get my MBA. So I can rise above all the petty bullshit in, in, in upper management. I mean, that's where the real glass ceiling is, you know. No one ever becomes CEO of a multinational corporation without an MBA. Experience and drive and brains and ingenuity mean nothing. And going for an executive MBA will prove once and for all that I'm smart. And then it won't matter how young I am or that most of the people who rise to my level are, are, are 20 years older. And I can stop trying to prove myself all the time. You must have to prove yourself too, right? Oh, yeah, it's a little different because I am different so tired I... of all the bullshit. Aren't you tired of all the bullshit that we have well, to... Well, yeah, you know, sometimes... Jeff is trying to take away the one thing that means anything to me. I don't care about the affair or, or the sex with the neighborhood mommies, but he can't have Emma. Nothing means anything without Emma. Do you understand? You have to stop him. I mean, now! Go! Get him and make him bring her back here. Just never mind that. Just go! Go! Go!
Well, we met Paul right here in this building. He used to come and watch because he had nothing else to do. And me and Jim are always here because we have a problem, you know, complying with court orders and things. Anyway, we started talking one day, and the next thing I knew, we were living there. In Paul Wright's house, rent-free. He got something out of it. Oh, meaning what, exactly? Well, I used to let him watch me. You know, undress. I saw him trying to catch me in the bathroom doing it once. So I went and told Jim, and Jim was like, no big thing. Said that I should go into his room. Said I should let him touch me if he wanted to. You know, I didn't care. We were sleeping in real beds with real sheets, and he was nice. He was too shy to do anything much, but, uh, but he liked the it. The way you're telling it makes it sound ugly, and it wasn't ugly. Well, that went on for a while, and then one day, Jim goes up to him and says, okay, man, you're my girlfriend. So you owe me. So Paul let him start selling stuff. Oh, come on, come on. Is Carolyn Wright paying you to testify? No. Are you sure about that? Because I can get her on the stand. And middle class people have a hell of a time lying under oath. Well, you do what you gotta do. Okay, but just so we're clear, if I do bring her back and she tells me she paid you, you'll be charged with perjury, arrested, and thrown in jail right now. Ask the judge if you don't believe me. Okay, she's paying me, big deal. You know, I was gonna take off. She made it worth my while to stay. And did she ask you to lie in your testimony? No. But I figured that, you know, I should make it sound good, so... I mean, I don't know if Jim said for sure, you owe me. I mean, he did, but he, he might have been kidding. But that's not really a big thing, is it? Big enough to make everything you said on direct tainted, no more questions. You know, he liked it when I touched him. That's no lie. He told me so himself. He told me that it was... I said no more thing. questions. That means you stop talking now. I'm putting this file back on my desk. Hey. Oh, you look kind of tired. Are you all right? Yeah. Uh, did anybody call me? No, but there's a nervous man with a chicken waiting for you in your office. Thanks. I gave him my egg salad sandwich. Come on, you must be hungry, little guy. Hey, maybe if I broke it into smaller pieces for him. Or maybe he wants more mayo. Oh, you think so? No, 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 no. no she, she's just done. Uh... Do you, uh, what is that smell? Oh, that's a really long story. <laughs> okay, do, do, do you know where Gordon and Gloria are? Yeah, but, uh, what about the chicken? Just first things first, okay? Yeah, but he's worried about what's gonna happen to it. He's gotta take it back. That's what's gonna happen. Because if you know where they are, you have to tell yeah, him. Yeah, but you know, he okay? doesn't want to take it back. He thinks it's being badly treated. Maybe there's another option. Yeah, the other option is he goes to jail, okay? Or a certain type of hospital. Or... Now, did you, did you hear what I said? What, about the chicken or the hospital? <laughs> No, about Gordon and Gloria, okay? Look, the, the police are very upset with them, okay? So if you know where can, they are... You can help them? Yeah, I can try, yeah. Do they have Noah? Because there's a secret place that Gordon talked about taking him. But I'm not supposed to tell unless it's an emergency. Well, you know what? This qualifies as that, okay? Because I'm worried that if the police find Gordon before I do, then maybe, you know, Gordon could get hurt. So if you, this is an emergency, so because you tell me where they are, then maybe I can help them, okay? Then will you help the chicken? How often my client come to your pawn shop? Many times. Did he come alone? No. With old man, Mr. Wright. Did Mr. Wright ever seem uncomfortable to you like he was there against his will? Objection. Calls for speculation. It speaks to the issue of whether my client had consent to sell Mr. Wright's possessions. You might want to rephrase the question, Mr. Sure. Andrew. Were they speaking to each other? Yes. Old man was always laughing at that one's stupid jokes, saying they should go for beers after. Do you fax your log of the new items you receive to police every week, Mr. Barsukovsky? I write in book. You don't fax your list to police? Is guideline, no? No is law. How about photo ID? Do you check that when people sell you things? It's poor neighborhood. Not everybody has driver's license. So sloppy bookkeeping, no ID check? Sure, if I had stolen items to sell, I'd go straight to you. I don't take stolen things. Not intentionally, of course not, sir, because if you did, well, you'd be breaking the law, and you wouldn't do that, would you? How about we just say, sometimes stolen goods make their way into your possession without you knowing for sure that they were stolen. But if those items are proven to be stolen, they get confiscated and you're out of pocket. You've lost money and, well, more importantly to the matter at hand, any credibility you might have had as a witness. Nothing further. After refusing to vacate the seats, Mr. Walsh, by this point very drunk and irate, punched the usher in the face, causing him to fall and hit his head. He then stood over him and dumped his beer over the unconscious young man's face. Security personnel restrained him until the police arrived. We're making a joint submission, Your Honor. Crown has agreed to 60 days in jail, two years probation, with a requirement for anger management counseling. Sir, these allegations is read substantially correct. Wait, what did she just say about counseling? I missed that. Uh, moment's indulgence, Your Honor. You agreed to plead guilty. You never said anything about me getting counseling. 
You need help for your anger. Oh, no, I need my anger. You're not taking my anger away from me. I mean it. You can all f off if this is what it's really about. Sir, the only temper allowed in this court is mine, so shut up. Why? Because you say so? Because your family had enough money to send you to law school, now you get to sit up there and pass judgment on me? You don't know shit! You get some real beauties, don't you, Mr. Ray? What the f is that supposed to mean? First things first, you little turd. You use language like that one more time in here and you're going right to jail. No more consultation with your poor lawyer there. No more due consideration from me. Just a fast arm behind your back and a ride in the paddy wagon. You got that? But I was just... Shut up! I'm talking! When I talk, everybody else gets to stand there and listen. It's the best part of my job. When people try to deny me the pleasure, I get mightily pissed. Now, not that it's any of your business, but I worked my own way through law school. My father was a janitor, and he had plenty of that working-class rage that you like to revel in. The thing is, he was a lot more eloquent and historically informed. You, sir, are just the guy who's out of control. So if you refuse to seek professional help, I refuse to let you wander among us anytime soon. I will accept the plea, and there'll be a finding of guilt. You think you're mad now, sir? Will you get a load of the jail time I'm about to give you? Six months? Seems like a lot. Yeah, well, I think he wanted to put him away for life, so... Are they gonna be okay? Not for a while. She should have just got him out, made the best of it. With the four of you in that house, would that really be the best of it? Probably not. Well, I was damn good in there today, wasn't I? Uh, Yes, sir. Yeah, that guy was nothing but a walking time bomb. You better start shopping for a higher class clientele, Mr. Ray. I mean, don't you just want to slap them silly sometimes? I earned everything fair and square. Paul needed help with the garden. I liked working for him. We were friends. We drink together. He'd tell me about his shitty daughter that never called. And he'd teach me about Plato. And uh, what Tanya said? Well, maybe I encouraged her to let him see her naked. Give him a little head now and then, you know. Present for an old guy. Relax him. I thought it was a pretty nice gesture on my part. So you'd do a little gardening, and in exchange, you'd get something from the house. How would that work, let's say, for weeding? Was that worth a TV or a microwave? Was cutting the grass good for a piano? Look, I never took anything without his permission. Uh, what about the grandfather clock the police found you with after he died? Uh, oh, well, just that one time. Oh, and... see, I find it easier to believe the version where you pimp out your girlfriend to deliberately manipulate a sick old man. Yeah, well, you believe what you want. You've had quite the life, haven't you? on the street since your 20s, a problem with alcohol, in and out of jail, beaten up a few times, no family, no friends. What about Tanya? And here she was testifying against you. Like if it makes you feel good to insult me, you go right ahead. Okay, thank you. Here you are, leading this miserable life. I think he was being ironic. You do? Rats. Okay. Anyway, here you are, this guy, with not a whole lot going for him, when out of the blue comes this kindly old man who takes you into his home. How about a question, counsel? All right, Your Honor, how about this for a question? What is wrong with you, sir? Why would you steal from the one person on earth who treated you with genuine kindness? I told you. I didn't. Oh, oh, that's right. He gave you his worldly possessions because your girlfriend relaxed him. Mm. Because, because you weeded his garden. And in the days when his health was so rapidly deteriorating, you were a particularly busy employee, weren't you? How was that supposed to be? When the paramedics arrived after his fatal stroke, almost everything was gone. Is that because you got out as much as you could before you knew they might have to be called? I figured, but well, who's going to believe he told me I could take it? Oh, you're probably right. How often does a man who's lying dead in a pool of his own urine and feces give someone permission to empty out his house? Here's the simple truth. You took an act of human kindness from a sick old man and you milked it for as much as you could get and you should be deeply ashamed of yourself. Yeah, well, well you put it that way, I was guilty as shit. Jesus. You don't know about my relationship with my father. I just wanted you to know that. It was a lot more complicated. I'm sure it was. Six months is a long time to wait for somebody to get out of jail. So why bother? Do yourself the favor you deserve, Tanya. Find an even bigger idiot to take his place. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Hmm. Mm. Just a lovely girl. She's not my type. But then again, I don't really have a type, but uh, you're kind of cute. Oh, in your dreams, Jack. In my dreams is fine for now. Can I take the chicken? No. But Elliot's mother got a, us a traveling case for it. I'm sorry, but the chicken is one of the things we're trying to escape from. It has, through no fault of its own, become the enemy. 
right. Okay. Hey. Bye. Uh, 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 bye. Bye. Uh, you know, I don't think you should just do it. Bye. Bye. The whole city is looking for you. That's one of the reasons why we're leaving. The other reasons have to do yeah, with... No, 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 I know. They have to do with the government keeping children from their parents and from disease-spreading chickens, from the destruction of the environment, in short, the end of the world. Bye, bye, bye. bye. But you know what? Gordon, I can't hear it anymore. Honestly, it's, it's too much. I can't, uh, I can't take it. I know, which is why we want you to come with us. You want me to... And we'll all start a new life in Greenland. <laughs> Gre Greenland the country? Yes. A place where they have respect for the environment, okay. understand the ecosystem, and cherish the trees, the no, wind. No, no, you, you know what? You can't do this, okay? You, you cannot abduct your six-year-old son. Bye, Elliot. Okay, bye, and, and whisk him off to, uh, you know, Greenland. Uh, Greenland on a, uh, you know, whatever kind of boat that is. You can't do that. It's, it's not the right thing to do. He'll be safer and more healthy there than he could ever be uh, here. Plus, he gets to go on a boat ride. I know you're concerned about us, Elliot, but we can't stay here anymore. Nobody understands us here, and everyone's angry with us. Especially the police. Look, we need a place where we can be ourselves. A place where we'll be allowed to be a family. Come with us, Elliot. We'll all get new names. Greenland names. <laughs> uh, yeah. Come with us. Come on. Who are you? Alice DeRay, I'm your lawyer. How did that happen? Well, your husband called uh, me... Never mind, just get me out of here. Look, I've been illegally detained, and, and now they seem to be implying there's something wrong with me. That psychiatrist interviewed me. That's right, I did. And I think Miss Gregg is suffering from her first psychotic incident. Uh, I also spoke with her husband, and he was able to describe certain symptoms typical of the period leading up to initial psychotic event. Such as? Withdrawal, depression, paranoia, uh, geographic disorientation. Geographic disorientation? Because I got lost coming home from the grocery store, Jeff, I had a lot on my mind. Yeah, Your Honor, I think this is a simple nervous breakdown. She is under a lot of pressure at work. It won't work, Jeff. You can only appear cooperative for so long. Eventually, they're gonna get around to asking you where my daughter is. I, I picked her up at the daycare and took her to my mother's. Sure you did. Ms. Duray? It could be work-related, I don't know. She's 31 years old. She was made a vice president of her company at 28, the youngest in their history. She recently started taking her executive MBA. She serves on numerous boards. Plus, she's the mother of a one-year-old. Yeah, it's stress. I mean, could she have accomplished all of that if she was suffering from a mental illness? Actually, any one of those events, the MBA, the job, the birth of the child, could have been the life stressor that instigated the event. But there's definitely been an event, so we need to get her into the hospital and start treatment because there's a chance we can reduce the severity of any repeat episodes are you finished good i want to talk to my lawyer find out what my husband paid him and tell him i will double it i am not going into any hospital they just want you to have a rest <sighs> while i'm having this rest who's going to be looking for my daughter doctor will she be sent to hospital right away there's at least a two-week wait for a bat so she's just going to have to wait around in the detention center i'm sorry your honor but that just doesn't seem appropriate what do you want me to do you could give her bail i can't consent to that this is Crown Onus, Your Honor. My client has no criminal record. She has a, a surety and a permanent address to return to. You could fashion a bail for her pending the availability of a bed. Your Honor, we'd be sending a woman suffering from delusions about her husband abducting her baby back into the family home. The chances of Ms. Gregg reoffending in those two weeks are... Okay, I can take her to a doctor and he can prescribe medication, <laughs> can't he? That's right. Dope me up so I can't understand what you're doing. You people are falling for his lies. He's going to leave and I'm never going to see my daughter again. Your Honor, the thing is we don't know what we're dealing with here. It could be schizophrenia, it could be uh, a severe case of postpartum depression. She didn't recognize her child at the daycare center and now we're considering putting her back in that home with the same child. Uh, I'd be extremely nervous about that. I'm sorry, Counsel. We're going to hold on to her for a while. You have to find my child. Find my baby. It's up to you now. Find my baby. Please don't Let's hurt her, please. please.
should call the police or something. Huh? <laughs>